Hey everyone, I'm Joe. Today it's time for me to do my reading wrap up for July 2018. July was a really good reading month in total. I read 15 books with 10 authors, but only two genres. And those two genres are science fiction and fantasy. So this video really fits into the booktube SFF hashtag that people use on Twitter. Now, without further ado, I'll get straight into talking about the books because otherwise this video is going to be quite long, but it already will be put longer than, than necessary. The first book is The Margaret by Sherry S. Tepper. I buddy read this with Rachel, whose channel is Kalanati. Me and Rachel have a habit now of buddy reading Sherry S. Tepper books every few months. This is the fourth or fifth one we've buddy read now, and we both enjoyed this book quite a lot. This is probably our favourite of all the Sherry S. Tepper we've read so far, though there will be many more hopefully this year and you know we'll see how many books of hers we'll get through. This is a science fiction book set with a very interesting premise. The main character is unsurprisingly called Margaret and at seven different uh, points in her life, six different points to be precise, um, other versions of her, other Margaret's will sort of split off from her this is a science fiction idea that is normally used with parallel worlds where you have a significant decision and where both decisions are taken and then there's like a parallel world where the right decision is made and the parallel world where the bad decision is made. In this, this is not parallel worlds however, this is the same world with seven versions of the same character. Sounds strange and it is, but it does work rather well. The seven different versions of Margaret are all very different in both personality, obviously due to life experience and obviously due to the fact that they've travelled to different worlds and such. They are very different ages as well because, you know, with relativity in light speed or near light speed travel and such. And they're on a journey, basically. They start off splitting off and it's like, well, will they come together? How many of them will come together? Will any of them die? What is the point in having seven alternative versions of this same character in the universe? And why has this one person sort of fissioned off into different versions? Curious idea. The writing is interesting and I did enjoy this book overall. It's not the easiest to get into, but it is well worth the effort, I think. I would recommend it. The second book that I read was on my Kindle, and that is The Collapsing Empire by John Scalzi. This was also a buddy read, this time with Kelsey, who is known as the Fancy Hat Lady Reads. Obviously I'll put a link to both Rachel's channel and Kelsey's in the description box below, of course. Now, this is a science fiction sort of space opera. It is the start of a new series by John Scalzi. I think the second book will be out uh, next year, I believe, if I remember correctly. And this is now the second book that I've uh, read by John Scalzi and the second book that I've not liked by John Scalzi. So yeah, his books aren't working for me and I'm starting to doubt that John Scalzi is the author of that for me because his books are just not working for me on a very personal level. The idea of this world, well this universe, is that there is something called the flow, which is kind of like a uh, sort of super highway in space, like a sort of spatial anomaly, where ships going into the flow can essentially accelerate to ultra high speeds. Rather than using light travel, they can use the flow instead. But this flow is a natural phenomenon, and they predict and they know that it's going to collapse this flow system. So now the empire that is built up around uh, the flow, which is and all the worlds that are connected are very interdependent on one another. None of them can really function by themselves, which frankly to me sounds a bit silly. But there you go. It's an interesting one, but frankly, John Scalzi, I don't think does. The idea justice, it's a nice idea, I really do like the idea, but the writing is too simplistic and it's too obvious, I think the plot was. Every character has one motivation and one emotion to do normally one task, and that's it. They normally have one or two other connections to other characters, which are normally fairly obvious, why they have those connections to that character, and it's just too obvious. I mean, I did a... A Goodreads written review, which I'll link in the description box below, 
that review is quite scathing and to the point and quite blunt because this book really did fail for me quite badly this was actually one of the um, least favourite books I've read in quite a long term actually it's probably my least favourite book I've read this year honestly if I'm thinking correctly so yeah this didn't work out well at all the next book that I read isn't just one book but it's actually four and that is the Tales of the Ketty J series by Chris Wooding this series comprises Retribution Falls The Black Long Captain The Iron Jackal and finally The Ice of Skulls now I'm going to do a separate review of this series in the upcoming few weeks or months so I'm not going to say too much now suffice to say this was a reread for me I first read it four years ago I loved it then I read, read it now because I just wanted something familiar and fun and I also wanted to see whether it was just at the time I liked it and I'm happy to say it wasn't just at the time I still think this series is absolutely fantastic it really is amazing I cannot recommend this series enough it's one of the best um, toy fiction steampunk series I have ever read actually no it's the best one I've ever read at least the most fun so I want to say best is kind of an, the better thing to say whether things are best or not this is a steampunk series as I've just said it's based around the crew of the Ketty J it's a sort of ragtag um, crew of, sort of misfits essentially that don't really fit into various other roles in normal society it's on this one particular world events in the first book um, trigger certain events off it gets uh, really big events do and it becomes more significant because the KJ crew becomes more well known they get into more trouble and by the end of the fourth book things are going wrong in quite big ways and they have to deal with the events that are triggered off in this book I love this series and I would recommend everybody possible to read it because I just really do like this series a lot as you may have gathered the next book that I read happened to be the physically largest book I read and also the longest in page count and that is Great North Road by Peter F. Hamilton this is a great big monstrous book it's well over uh, a thousand pages and as you may know from being able to see the books above my head there I am quite a big fan of Peter F. Hamilton I really enjoy his books frankly none of his books have ever been a letdown for me and this indeed is not a letdown for me this is science fiction but it's also a bit of a sort of a kind of almost a murder mystery but it's set on um, earth in the future where society has expanded um, beyond earth though but it's not about the space it's about the particular murder taking place and it's of one of the north clones this particular guy many years ago he started uh, cloning himself while they're having children and there is now a kind of entire sort of well species or generation of these north clones they own this great big extremely wealthy and extremely successful business and one of them is murdered but they don't know which one because how do you tell clones apart when they are almost totally identical they've got to identify which um, of the clones it is why it's been murdered and how it relates to the murder of another north clone 20 years before and the woman who murdered him is still in prison so they have to conduct her she gets involved and the murder that took place of this other north clone was on this other planet and it's really interesting actually in some very curious ways because it's big in scale but quite personal in some ways yes it's a bit wordy at times you know Hamilton does have that habit of doing that but it really is worth the effort because I really enjoyed this book I mean I just love Peter Hamilton though so you know, I'm, I'm going to be a bit biased with this you know with being how positive I am but it's an interesting science fiction book with sort of thriller mystery elements and I really enjoyed it it's got lots of advanced technology or you know, sort of alien type sort of species and such I just really do enjoy it the next book that I read was actually three books and that is the third, fourth and fifth books in the Long Earth series written by T. Patchy and uh, Stephen Baxter those are The Long Mars The Long Utopia and finally The Long Cosmos now I am going to do a series review of all five books 
in the upcoming few weeks like the Kitty J series now obviously I didn't love this series as much as the Kitty J series it's much harder to read it's, it meanders a little bit at times and it, each book is not like a really consistent series in my each book it, is uh, exploring a different idea based on the main idea of um, the long earth the long earth is based on the idea that people can step between different realities there are thousands of alternate realities now this is the multiverse theory which can only step between earths using this very small simple device that one guy accidentally creates and all these different earths though are uninhabited the people now humanity is spreading out between the different versions of earth but all these different versions of earth they're similar but not the same because obviously they had no influence for mankind so each one is like a slight variation on the others and some of them are obviously drastically different and it's an interesting idea I think it's done well but it is hard to read and at times there are moments that were a little bit dull frankly because it meanders off in a bit odd ways which I didn't overly enjoy but I did like the series overall it was well written and the ideas are impressive in it frankly I just wish it had I don't know something more that I'll go um, into more depth about in a series of you anyway next up I read The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison this is the third and final book in the Broken Earth trilogy this particular book has been nominated for the Hugo Award for Best Novel 2018 which I actually will be at the ceremony because this may or may not actually win and I thought I haven't actually particularly enjoyed this trilogy it has done extremely well both commercially and you know as far as reviews are concerned people really enjoy it and it's indeed it's very popular on booktube with many of the people that I've talked to seem to really enjoy it for me this didn't really work that well I like the concept of it was good but the characters didn't do anything for me I just thought frankly they were really boring most of the time and they just seemed to talk about stuff that I wasn't interested in um, it talks about uh, race comes into it and acceptance of people being who they are and this is one of the things I didn't like because she's written a world where the slavery of this one type of people called the origins who can control essentially earthquakes and the earth itself you know they, they can cause earthquakes but they can stop them these people um, are essentially slaves and society as a whole got the global society on this world is perfectly happy with origins being treated in a really horrific way I mean cattle are treated perfectly well because you need things from them origins are treated poorly you know the beaten the starved the, you know you can torture them as long as they're able to actually uh, stop earthquakes that's all that matters so they're treated they're not even sub, the subhuman they're, they're not even animals they're just objects I didn't like that because it's in in this world because it was too accepting of the population were of it and there were other things that I just I then I just didn't connect with this series uh, or any of these three books I mean I could understand why some people would like it it just didn't work for me and so far N.K. Jameson isn't doing that well because this is now the fifth book bio that I've read and I've the first two books with geology the dream blood one and that was okay as well but i didn't love that either so hmm jemison's not turned out too well for me so far next up i read the uh, two books and those are long way to a small language planet and a closed and common orbit both by becky chambers uh, a long way to a small language planet is the first book in the wayfarers universe closed and common orbit is the second however when it says in this universe, you know, book one and two, they're only connected in terms of the universe and one character basically, or two characters. The the plot is, uh, is not a continuous plot between this book and this book. It's not. This book ends. This is based on a small event that happens in the towards the end of the first book. I 
like both books. I reread this purely because I wanted to reread a uh, closing time and orbit. The third book in the Wayfarer's universe is being released right around uh, now as well, although that's in hardback, so it will be a year before the paperback is available, so I'm in no room for it. And I loved both books. The science fiction, the, the, the first book is set uh, following a crew of a sort of wormhole tunneling ship and their long journey. It's quite gentle in many ways in terms of the plot because, you know, there's no like big action set pieces particularly much. I mean, yes, there's a few action scenes, but nothing too dramatic. It's more about the journey and about the way characters interact and try to pull up with one another or fail to pull up with one another. And the second book, uh, Close Common Orbit, is similar, but this doesn't follow the ship. This follows a character now who is on a world and a character is trying to fit in because this character is different, let's say, which you'll find out in the first book which character it is. And they're both really interesting. I mean, I've met Becky Chambers actually and got um, this book signed uh, two years ago now. And I really do like these books and I'm very much looking forward to the third because they're just well written, with nice ideas. Some people think they're a bit too sort of gentle and a bit too sort of open-minded. I'm like, and what, you want books that are violent all the time. I like having a more open-minded, gentle book occasionally. It's different, it really is. It's not something you come across often, which I appreciate. The penultimate book is Cantata 140 by Philip K. Dick. This is otherwise called in nearly every other edition by every other publisher as A Crack in Time. I'm not sure what Cantata 140 actually is related to because A Crack in Time is a lot more than A Crack in Space. In fact, it's actually a much more accurate title because this is a world where there's a type of machine essentially that makes essentially kind of like portals kind of like teleporters around the world but it's a fairly rare technology and one of these essentially sort of portals or, or crack in space as the other title goes uh, goes wrong a repairman comes along fixes it and this portal no longer leads to but it should do it leads to some kind of alternative earth and frankly I, I'm not going to say too much more I actually liked this this was actually um uh, one of the Philip K. Dicks more recently that I've read and actually enjoyed. The previous three or four Philip K. Dicks at least I have not enjoyed. They've been just strange, bizarre, and I get the impression that Philip K. Dick, well, he was most of the time, he, he, you know, he was known for taking illegal uh, drugs a lot of the time. With this, he actually, I felt as though maybe he actually wasn't on drugs when he wrote this for a change, because with some of his books, he actually was drugged up really heavily. And I kind of thinking that you can actually tell because they're like really bizarre and all over the place. This actually felt quite concise and a bit more like a normal structured book. I liked it because I could actually understand it, which many of the, the previous books I've read by him, I didn't know what he was trying to say because it just they just felt random and strange and like, well, like he was trying to go on the same drug trip that um, Philip K. Dick was on, frankly. So I, I would recommend this one above many of these others frankly so far but we'll see in time because i'm reading a lot more by him. and the final book is an ebook so i'll put a picture up on the screen now and that is the wizard's dilemma by diane dwyer now this is the fifth book in the young wizards series i started this uh at the start of the year and this is a series that i am extremely enjoying because it is just fun well written it's got dark moments it is a fantasy series about two young characters Kit and Nita, they discover in the first book that they are wizards because they find these um, big sort of wizards tombs which then allows them to learn magic and magic is very significant to them on very personal levels because as wizards, magicians, they have duties to perform and they have a, an oath to live up to which really does tie them to magic in a very fundamental way but they have to live a, a normal life as well, you know, they're still going to school because they're still very young in the first book, obviously by this point they're a little bit older now, um, they're, they're towards sort of middle school now, and in this book, um, Nita's mum, one character, he's very, very ill, they actually think she's going to die, and Nita has to go on a journey to see if she can help her mum through magic, and it's remarkably dark, 
and very personal for her. And I mean, all the books actually, they've got amusing moments, they've got great characters, they've got some remarkably dark elements in them. And I just really like these books. I mean, to me, these books are what Harry Potter should have been. <laughs> Although Harry Potter was actually written after these books were started. Harry Potter, I'm not that big fan of. I do like these. I, these are darker. Just really well written. There are some great ideas. And great characters. And the way the characters interact is absolutely fantastic. I would recommend the Young Wizard series. Probably. I really would. So, with that said, that's it for all of the books that I read in July 2018. This was a very interesting mixture of books, also a rather large mixture of books, and I'm going to put this down before I actually drop it, because this would be unfortunate for the books. If you've read any of these, or would like to, then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion. If you have any books you think I might like based on these books or any other, then again, please leave a comment, because I'm always bringing try new authors and new genres and such, of course. Uh, if you have any suggestions on things you might think I might be um, able to make an interesting video about, again, leave a comment. All my social media links, as well as the links to both Rachel's and uh, Kelsey's channel, will be found in the description box below, as always. With that said, that is it for this video. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you another day. Bye for now.